Today's podcast is sponsored by The Cooperators. As part of your local community, their advisors understand the challenges facing businesses like yours. They're here to help you protect what you've worked so hard to build and ease your mind with professional advice, the right insurance solutions, and a full range of coverage options. Visit cooperators.ca to find a local advisor today. Welcome to Canada's podcast, the number one podcast for entrepreneurs by entrepreneurs. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Canada's podcast. I'm Bonnie Elgy, host of Calgary's podcast here in Alberta. And today I am delighted to welcome author, speaker, and executive coach Jason Krause to the podcast. Jason is a former pilot for the National Canadian bobsled team and is also the founder of Level 52, a leadership development and executive coaching practice. Jason, welcome to the show. I'm so glad you could be here. Thanks, Bonnie. It's great to be here. Yeah, well, let's jump right in. And, and can you tell our listeners a little bit about yourself and, and in particular, what has inspired this passion that you have for leadership development? The passion for me started when I was a national team athlete, being in the world of constantly seeking to make things better. I, I was an avid reader. I was uh, also studying business during my, during my athletic career, but it was a close friendship with uh, another athlete named Steve Messler, where we'd speak about these things and about leadership, high performance. And we thought, you know, we're, we have access to a lot of interesting resources, mindsets. How do we get these out into the world outside of sport? And that's when the wheels started turning and then the experimentation began around taking these principles, packaging them with uh, some emerging science and helping leaders make a, a difference. Right. Yes, Steve's been a, a guest on the podcast as well, so oh, that's a great connection. So can you d- dive a bit deeper into um, an example of, of maybe some of those principles that you, you learned on the bobsled track that you've been able to apply now in this uh, next iteration of, of your career? The first one that jumps out to me is, is defining what high performance is. Mm-hmm. A lot of people, when they see high performance, masterful leaders, they think they have found something big. Like, what's the big thing that they do when really in high performance, a sport like bobsled, a hundredth of a second makes the difference between being on the podium or out of the race or football's a game of inches. And high performance leadership is the same or what you know, we extend it to meaningful leadership when it's the little things that make the biggest difference. So while everyone else is waiting, hoping, chasing for the magic bullets that are going to save the day or fix their environment, it's the high performance and meaningful leaders that are focusing on the little things that most people step over or ignore. And so what would be an example of a little thing that a, a lot of people ignore, but actually can be the, the difference maker? Anything from taking a stance for clarity. You, so many leaders, even when they don't think they do, they do speak in shorthand or nebulous, nebulous words. If you and I are on the same team and I say, hey, Bonnie, Uh, I need you to take more ownership. And you go, yeah, yeah, I can do that. And I'm like, okay, great. Bonnie's going to take more ownership. And then you leave based on your understanding of what you think ownership is to me. And it's a guessing game. So much friction happens in the business environment because of assumptions. Whereas I can employ a simple tool like one that we call bookending where I talk about ownership. Okay, Bonnie, I need you to take more ownership this is what it looks like to me. This is what I would see you doing. This, these are the actions. These are the, what I would hear you saying. And so really create that clear image so that we're looking at the same idea of ownership. And then just as important, let's talk about what ownership is. It Just to make sure these are the things that are really going to disappoint me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's a little thing that's so simple that most people don't take the time to do. Yeah. We hear something and immediately move to action instead of clarification. 
Yeah. And then we fig- we wonder how the heck did we get so far apart? Mm-hmm. So our, our audience, Jason, is a broad range of entrepreneurs across North America. Some are, are smaller business owners, some run lor- large organizations. I'm wondering, um, who are the clients that you work with? And, and how, how do you work with them? Or, or do you have different service offerings depending on, on the needs of, of an, an organization? This is one of the things that has shifted since COVID. A lot of our work usually came, into two, came in through two channels. One, we do enterprise programs, deliver leadership programs inside the business, or individual leaders would reach out for one-to-one coaching. But now it's, we've opened up our programs where, whereas before we'd have 15, 30 people in a program from one organization, we changed it to more open enrollment, which has been a benefit to everyone where you have four people from, uh, let's say the head office at Home Depot, two people from Google, three from uh, ATB, whatever it is, you have a wide cross section of industry from people from San Francisco, Boston, Edmonton, like everywhere. So that, that has been a, that has been a big shift. Primarily businesses hire us to train their leaders or leaders hire us to elevate their fitness, their ability. So obviously when you, when you're talking about working with organizations all over the, the world and all over North America, you've had to pivot as we've gone into restrictions associated with the pandemic. I'm, I'm curious, what did you have to do when, when the world started to change last March? Our business, the way it was structured, so much of our work evaporated with travel restrictions. Like I said before the call, we, we were flying everywhere to deliver our work. And all of a sudden, with these restrictions, we had to change. And I'm so proud of the way the team took our work what we'd normally do in a couple of days in person, we created extended 12-week programs, two hours a week, where un, like, there is no question that it is a better product because now instead of, instead of exposing you to the concepts and having you work on it over two days, we can spread it out over 12 weeks take a deeper dive into a specific area of content. So now you can exercise it and apply it. That's what matters. Like the training is useless if you don't apply it to move the needle in your environment. And so we are forced to innovate mm-hmm. the program design, the delivery, and it painful as it was, it, we are much better off for it. And so are our clients. Mm. Well, and I'm curious, uh, working with your clients, what have been some of the greatest challenges they've faced as, as we've had to adapt um, the way that we do business, right down to the fact that, you know, teams cannot be physically together the way that they once were. And I'm just curious, what are some of those common themes or challenges that you've heard from your clients and, and how have you helped them adapt or or move forward in their leadership role? The first one that jumps out is dealing with uncertainty. Mm-hmm. You know, with, with we, we knew it was always a possibility that things can change, but a pandemic and the extent was, I don't think, on anyone's radar. Mm-hmm. And now it's sort of the waiting game. What, what will we go back to? What are the elements of normal that we'll have that, that we'll experience moving forward? And there's just so much uncertainty. And working with leaders to create certainty, mile markers, Mm -hmm. um, structures that help us focus our attention on what matters because we all know the entropy that can happen when just our, our focus, our creativity leaks because it, we're getting pulled into the place of uncertainty. And so working with leaders and their teams to identify, okay, there, there may be a lot of things we don't know, but what do we know? How do we still make 2021 a great year, despite 
the things that we don't know yet. Right, right. And how how do they adapt to that stress? Like it's been an extraordinarily stressful um, time uh, for people, regardless of of where they sit in, a, in an organization. But um, you know, we hear a lot about mental health right now and the the long term impacts of uncertainty. Um, how are you supporting them or coaching them in, in dealing with their stress in a manageable way? So two things, maybe even three. <laughs> uh, one, it, whether you're an ar- entrepreneur, a leader in your business, working inside the business, it, it, there's a concept that we enroll leaders to embrace and that is the mindset of meaningful masochism Mm -hmm. pains challenges turbulence are a part of being a leader or business owner and they can overwhelm us when it looks like a, a, a massive tsunami of pain stress irritations but a meaningful masochist in our language in our words is someone that identifies the pains that they will pursue on the path towards their resonant vision. It, it's a reality. We're going to face these challenges. If, if we aren't, then that's actually when we got to start being careful. And so a meaningful masochist finds the pains that are truly going to help us exercise and elevate our fitness as a business, mm-hmm. as a team. But then the big question is like, what is the compelling vision? that has me want to exercise these. Without it, it can easily be sucked into the place of overwhelm than it is the, you know, the exhilaration you get from the progress of engaging with the pain, much like an athlete. Mm-hmm. Um, but then a tangible tool that any leader or individual for that matter can benefit from is what we call a CSP inventory. That take inventory of all of the things that are turbulent in your environment from the complaints, the things you you'd wish would be different, the stressors, the things that keep you up at night. And then like the big pains Mm -hmm. is then once we get them, get them down and we can strategize around what we might want to engage with and what we can put off for now. Today's podcast is brought to you by The Cooperators. You can count on them to support you and your business with a full range of insurance coverage options. Their products provide the flexibility you want with the protection you expect. To find a Cooperators advisor near you, visit cooperators.ca. That's very good advice. Um switching gears a bit here Mm. i wanted to talk to you about your book because one of the things that you you mentioned in our pre-call was that um the the changes that happened earlier this year and and i guess in in a way we could say that was part of the pain right uh allowed you time to get focused in and complete your book so why don't you share with us a bit about your book um, the science behind success and 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 what are what is the premise behind it? Yeah, yeah. Getting the book done was a good lesson, and sometimes um, the world gives you what you need and not what you want. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, through because we were traveling so much, or I was, um, the halt on travel created the space to finally get this done. The science behind success is the model that we use with leaders, the four elements of science, as well as the the specific tools we use with leaders to navigate turbulence and deliver meaningful leadership into their world. And and can you give us a a bit more detail about those pillars and, and what they entail? The four pillars. So there's the science behind success. Yes. Is... And when we use the word science and success, people can assume it's one thing. Here's the way we frame it. Science, we use the example of Ignaz Semmelweis. Uh, A doctor in the 1800s saw a problem. Too many women were were dying when they were giving birth. Mm -hmm. And yet, uh, 
when when these women were delivering their or uh, giving birth inside these clinics, the death rate was three times higher than working with a midwife, for example. And so Simmelweis obsessed over the solution, proposed it once he found a repeatable solution, and he was laughed at. Mm. He was committed to an insane asylum. What was this crazy thing he proposed that, hey, um, all doctors have to do is wash their hands. Now, of course, that was validated by Louis Pasteur after Simmelweis passed on. But why we use that as an example is bad science is when we seek to validate our own ideas, our expertise. Whereas real science is the pursuit of greater understanding. Like with curiosity, seeking to find out if I do this, what will the impact be? And so if science is the pursuit of greater understanding, what is success? Mm-hmm. Well, most people struggle thinking that success is a destination, that when I get to this revenue point, when I get to this senior vice president or CEO role, then I'll have made it. Oh. But that is a trap that we call destinationitis. Mm-hmm. And we use success differently as success is simply progression towards that vision that inspires you. And so we frame that and then use four elements of science as a backdrop to make leadership, culture, influence make sense. The quick, the quick Coles notes version of each, yeah. uh, the physiology of growth, why no pain means no gain and why that matters. The pseudoscience of memetics and behavioral contagion. We've been working with viruses for the last 10 years as a leadership tool, and now we just live in a world of viruses. The next one is epigenetics, the science behind why culture eats strategy for breakfast and what leaders need to know. And then the last one is neuroscience, skill acquisition. What are the structures, the simple structures you can use to accelerate your wisdom, your influence and impact inside the organization? Well, it sounds like there is so much depth of material that we could probably spend a couple hours easily talking more about about your book. And I'm wondering for our listeners, if if this was something they wanted to learn more about and and to pick up a copy, where would they be able to do that, Jason? They can visit us at level52.ca. There's information on the book. There are some resources you can download. And uh, that they can also be in touch with me. Okay, perfect. And we'll make sure at the end of the show to to get all of your contact information um, as well. So um, I'd like to to talk with you a little bit more now about your own personal journey as an entrepreneur. Um, as, As you've built Level 52, one of the things that we really like to do for our listeners is share stories of of how businesses are built, you know, regardless of industry. And I'm just curious, how, how long did it take you to, to build Level 52 to where it is today? It's taken a very windy road. <laughs> from, from where I started yes. in 2006, the vision mm-hmm. I had, there were peaks and valleys And there was a point in late 2007 where I was like, I have to abandon this. Mm -hmm. And I went to apply for jobs. I sought a recruiter and I would, I was so in need of a job, some supplemental income to shift this vision to be a side hustle rather than my primary work that I was applying for a job and you'd want to talk about rock bottom. I couldn't even get hired to sell industrial racking for like a $30,000 annual salary. Like I was doing that just to help pay the bills because Mm -hmm. I had eaten everything up. But it's funny how the world works because the next month I just through connections ended up, ended up uh, uh, getting connected to a consultant that needed work. And that was extended work for multiple years so I could balance it. And so it's been a roller coaster. I don't know if the peaks and valleys ever stop. Yeah. But the peaks just get a little higher. 
<laughs> and sometimes the valleys get a little deeper too. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's for sure. Well, I um, I'm wondering, uh, you, you're so heavily focused on leadership. Who is the leader that you admire and why? The most remarkable leader I have ever worked with. I was uh, during the many iterations of level 52 before level 52 really became level 52. Mm -hmm. I took a, um, a senior leadership position for a firm down in San Francisco and I got to work with the kind of leader that I aim to be. Mm -hmm. And her name is Michael Riggs Parsh. When you talk like this, this is, this is a woman who gets the balance between the rigor around the business and the rigor around really strong, trusting relationships. Mm -hmm. And so from day one, the way she set the foundation of our relationship to the way she pushed me, believed in me. I mean, I hope my kids get to experience a leader like that. And she's, she's been a, what would you call that? She's been the lighthouse mm -hmm. for me when it comes to helping establish what is the benchmark for a powerful leader, the kind of leader we need. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's a wonderful example. Um, do you have favorite resources or podcasts or books that, that, you know, either pick you up when you're maybe in a bit of a valley or just that you repeatedly will recommend to others and, and to clients that you think may be helpful for our listeners? Mm. There are so many. Uh, I'll tell you one of the latest books that is fascinating to me is Upstream by Dan Heath. Mm -hmm. Just looking at the problems far upstream rather than getting caught in the, into the reactive trap. Uh, two other books that I gift the most. One is The Alchemist mm -hmm. um, by Paulo Coelho. Just yeah. a great example of process versus destination. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a wonderful book. And then another one, regardless if, if you're a parent or not, I do tend to buy it for every person I know that's about to have kids, but it's called Secrets of Happy Families. Mm -hmm. And it's uh, by a gentleman named Bruce Feiler. And it has practical business tools that you can apply to your family. And with four kids, that... Uh, that's a great resource. Yeah. But as far as pick me up, I find my, whenever you throw in a podcast or listen to a book on Audible, I like to do it when I run. It's inspiring just learning new, mm -hmm. new elements of leadership or business tools that can help you navigate the challenges you're facing. Yeah. So, as you look ahead to, to 2021, what's, what's giving you hope right now or what's bringing you joy? What I say to my clients, our teammates at Level 52, progress is inspiring. What you focus your attention on expands. If it's where we aren't, what happened during COVID, like th there's so much we can focus on that's not working that what inspires me is the progress, the progress we made over 2020 with obstacles we never thought would happen and what we're continuing to do, the book reaching the audience. And so when I look at 2021, um, I'm inspired at the progress and the momentum that we've created through helping leaders navigate this. You will have stories to tell for the rest of your career, right? And, and um, extraordinary circumstances that have definitely tested all of us. So bef before we wrap up, Jason, I'm just wondering, is there anything else that you would like to share with our listeners, either about your work or, or even a message that you think would really resonate with Canadian entrepreneurs right now? If we look at the story of Ignaz Semmelweis. Mm -hmm. Here's the irony in that whole thing. What he discovered is that the physicians that were trying to help people were ironically the ones infecting the situation and make it, making it worse. And so the message would be 
is to step back and look at all of the challenges, the pains that I'm facing, in what way might I be infecting the situation I, I think I'm trying to solve? Mm -hmm. And if you can step into that place of owning your problems, then you can do a lot of things from that place. That is great, great advice or a challenge, I think, for all of us to take that step back. And, and often at this time of year, it is, it, it is a time of reflection as we start to set goals for next year. So I thank you for, for sharing that and, and for giving us something to ponder. <laughs> in the weeks ahead. So um, please tell us where, where listeners can connect with you online and how they can, can get a hold of you if they'd like to learn more about your very important and meaningful work that you're doing right now. Yeah, thank you. It, they can find me on LinkedIn, Jason Kraus, Jason with a Y, uh, or visit our website that I mentioned before, level52.ca. They can reach out, get in touch with me there. Any questions about what I've discussed, I'm happy to answer. That's great. Well, Jason, I have so enjoyed having you as a guest today. Thank you so much for your time and uh, look forward to connecting again soon. Thank you, Bonnie. It's great to be here. Thanks. Today's podcast was brought to you by the Cooperators Business Insurance. They're here to help make sure you and your business are protected today and into the future. Visit cooperators.ca to find a local advisor today.